By the end of today's video, you'll be able to step-by-step -step assemble your very own hooded shooter. I'm Brogan Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. And today I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how you can design and build a shooter for a 12.7 centimeter ball. You can use it for any robotics projects. And for this one, I'm using the same ball that you can find for the FTC decode season for robotics. This design also has an integrated angle finder so you can change the angle of the hood so that you can have different trajectory angles and figure out what works best for your design and how far it is you're trying to shoot. The first thing is I like to start with a nice clean workbench. You're gonna need a couple tools for today, three millimeter and two and a half millimeter uh, Allen keys or in wrench forms. I like to use this little uh, drop right here because this allows me to help uh, sort my screws and then I can grab a screw, drop it on the top and it rolls down and falls into the correct place that I need. Just makes life a lot easier for organizing. You'll need some lock nuts. And for the parts, you can use either a laser cutter, plasma cutter, depending on how you feel. Uh, you can even 3D print some of these out. Some of these will fit on side of a 3D printer. I just have this printed out at three millimeter plywood today. It's gonna be good enough for our purposes. If you were to make this a little more robust, you might wanna consider six millimeter plywood. It's gonna make life a lot easier. So let's get started with the motor assembly. And typically I use Go Build a Motors, but I've been a big fan of these Rex motors lately, or these Rev uh, HD Hex motors. Reason being, Go Build a sells a little adapter here that allows it to adapt into a set of U channel, or it allows it to uh, add on a 70 millimeter hex a shaft at the end. I think they call it eight millimeter rex, but it actually is only seven millimeter hex. Uh, and the reason I like this and this ultra planetary from Rev is it allows you to stack up different gear ship boxes. You can get an incredibly robust motor uh, for just one price. And it's awesome. I think it's like 44 euro or something like that. Uh, and you get uh, anything from a, a bare motor at 6,000 RPM all the way up to, I believe it's a hundred uh, times down on a gear ratio. So pretty awesome stuff uh, to be able to get that. So let's get started with assembly the motorly structure here. You're going to need some piece of uh, thin U-channel from Go Builder. You can make whatever length works for your design. Uh, I'm going to be using it for some prototyping later, so I just have a nice big handle. makes things a little bit easier. So I'm going to line my holes up onto my PCG out first. I'll throw in some 12 millimeter screws here so we get a nice amount of mounting force going into our design in the end. And normally when you go into wood, you want to use a washer. I'm not using a washer on this purpose today, just because I'm going to be doing a little bit of prototyping here. But if you're going to be having this designed up for a long period of time, you definitely want to be using a washer. And as I snug these down, you're going to want to snug down in a cross pattern. And the reason you want to use a cross pattern is because you want to make sure that you are tightening these things down evenly all the way across. What can end up happening if you just tighten one side at a time and end up going in a circle as opposed to a cross pattern is that things will not tighten down evenly. Because I'm going down into a plate of wood here, I don't want to super snug these things up like crazy because otherwise I'm going to start compressing into my wood too much, and I don't want to do that. All right, so I'm feeling pretty happy with that. Nice, snug, stable connection. Let's go ahead and repeat the same thing on the other side. But on this side, we're going to have to mirror it. So I want to make sure that I have these designs mirrored in such a way that they are actually going to line up like so. This is indeed the correct mirror. We're going to place this one on the outside and for this one, we're going to have to use some square lock nuts. Be able to hold that in. Then we'll grab some more 12 millimeters. Oh, I could probably use less than that. I could probably use a 10 millimeter. So I'm not end up twisting these things on for days. In my experience, you want to use the smallest fastener you need to be able to get the job done and still go into your lock nuts. Especially with designing a flywheel you're going to be having a lot of uh, vibration forces applying here. So if you use too short of a fastener, you're going to run some issues where you have vibration taking your lock nuts out. But if you use too long of a fastener, you run into the opposite issue, where now you're stuck for 25 minutes screwing in 
all of your pieces, and that's no fun by any other means. So now I can take my wrench. We're going to go ahead and snug these up again. This is a 7mm wrench. Snug these up so that we end up in a nice cross pattern again, but not so snug that I'm absolutely destroying my piece of wood here. You can use a nut holder. You can use a crescent wrench. You can use a ratchet. Whatever it is you're feeling, whatever tools you have as access to as well, to be able to get these tightened down. If you're using a 3D printed part, I would also probably consider putting in a washer as well, because those things will start to bite in. So now we've got our mirrored section. We're good to go on this part. Let's go ahead and add in our axle at this point next. Now to be able to attach our axle in, we're actually gonna start with our rhino wheel and a hyper hub. Uh, I'm using a 96 millimeter wheel here. This is a 30A diameter or 30A shore hardness. You can use hard if you want. I like to use squishier wheels, it makes things a little bit easier. And on this one, I'm gonna make sure I add the hyper hub onto the thin side not the deep side. So you'll see that on the wheel here, one of these sides is deeper than the other. I'm going to add this to the shallow side because that's going to make life a lot easier for tightening and untightening this later. We'll line up our holes in the middle like so, and then we'll put in some 12 millimeter bolts. Or 16s actually might be a little bit better. So let's throw some 16s in. And in an X pattern, I get the feeling that a 12 might want to loosen out on us. So let's use some 16s instead. Again, anytime you are personally going plastic, I suggest you add a washer. Although these GoBuilder products are made with acetal on the outside, and the acetal plastic is a pretty resilient plastic, you still want to use some sort of clamp. Now on this side, we need to extend our axle so that it ends up being quite a bit longer. Now I don't have access to a coupler right now. You definitely want to be using a coupler for this section. Reason being that you want to use a coupler in this section is these hyper hubs only clamp on one side. So this is actually technically only going to compress the axle on this one section. And a coupler has a compression on this side and a compression on this side. So because I'm going to constrain the system down, I'm not super concerned that we're going to run into this problem. But this is definitely not something that you'd want to run outside of a test scenario because these things might end up coming undone on your robot. And to counteract this, we're actually going to end up using two clamps on the other side that you don't typically need to use so that we can make sure this thing's not going to pop out. Because you can see that right now, I'm capable of just lifting this whole system right off. It's not actually stuck onto our design. So now we've got our axle set up like so. Now we can go ahead and start putting together our back section. So we're going to slide on our large section like so. We're just going to leave this loose for now. We're not going to bother actually attaching this because now comes where we're going to put on our main section in the back. So let's flip this around so we can get a little more access. And at this point, I'm going to put on my little spacer plate. Uh, this one, again, you don't really need to use this if you're going to be using this in a uh, separate design uh, because I'm just simply using this as a tester, I made up a quick little plate here so that I can get my correct distances. Because for my ball, I'm using a 12.7 millimeter ball. This ends up giving me the correct compression rates that I need on mine. So you might find that you need to use a different plate or a different distance on your ball. So you probably need to adjust this plate for your own specific design. Now we can go ahead and flip our design over and let's start actually doing the main hood section. Now I've printed these out of PETG. I highly suggest for robotics, you print things out of PETG or PCTG. Actually, I've been a big fan of PCTG because they tend to be a lot more impact resistance than PLA is. And I've got two little sections here and the intention of this design is that one of these is open and one of them is shut. So you want to be able to slide a sheet of polycarbonate into this open section. So you want to make sure that open section is facing the bottom. As well on this design, there's a few different holes here that we can mount our sections or our curved sections into. 
And then on this, we want to make sure that I also have a few of these uh, side braces, and these help keep this uh, constrained laterally so that this thing doesn't whack around so much. Now, as this thing is constrained around on this section, uh, you may find that you're going to have to add and remove the sections depending on how much angle you actually want on this. So we're going to go ahead and add the first section in like so. I might need an 18 millimeter in on this one or even longer. I might even need a 20 millimeter. Alrighty, so we're going to make sure that our slot is facing down to the bottom of our design where our intake would come in. Then we're going to grab a 20 millimeter bolt, slide this through like so. And I'm going to add in our extension point as well. It looks like I'm probably actually going to need a longer bolt for that one. I might even need a 30. But I probably want something more like a 24 mil, but 30 is what I have access to on hand. So I'm going to be screwing in for days here, going against my own advice. And you'll see why I don't like doing this in a moment, because we're about to start twisting this thing four days. So I will see you in a few hours once this is done. Snug up like so. And now let's add in our next bolt up at the top. I'm also going to grab another 30 for this one. Because I'm going to start with two plates across. You might find, depending on the angle you want, I'm going to start at a slightly higher angle that you might want to start at a less at this point. But I'm going to shoot for something like a 45 degree angle to get started. Because I don't want that ball to hit these braces as it fires out. I'm going to remove it. Now let's repeat the same thing. On the other side, again, making sure that I have that slot, making sure that it's on the bottom where we're going to be firing our piece through. Grab our lock nut. And one more like so. Well, I'm going to flip my whole unit around. We can now use some 20 millimeters to finish securing these so that it's not really loose and flying around. Oops, 18 mil is too thin. So we're going to slide a few more in here just to make sure that this thing isn't going to be coming undone and it ends up at decently shore. Shored up. We'll add one more up top. Now, as I said earlier, we now need to be able to constrain this thing so that it's not able to pop out. So I'm gonna grab myself an eight millimeter ball bearing. We're gonna slide this ball bearing here. It's gonna have a flange on the end of it. So you can see on the end of this flange here that there's a little lip on this one and that allows it to pop out. So now we're about to make a bit of a sandwich here. I'm gonna grab myself a sonic hub. It looks like so. I'm gonna make this side that's facing out facing towards our plate. So I'm gonna slide that onto our kind of shish kebab here. And then I'm gonna slide the flange side of the ball bearing onto our shish kebab again. And then we're going to slide it through that top hole and on like so. So that this can help us with constraining. I'm gonna push that ball bearing all the way onto that unit, slide that sonic hub up all the way against it so that it constrains that ball bearing in like so. And now I'm going to give this little sonic hub a little twist on, give it another little twist on this side, and that is gonna clamp our axle on so it's not gonna come undone. And then we can use, center our flywheel in the middle of our design here, and we can now clamp on this other hyper hub so the design's not coming apart. Now we're just about done our design here. Last thing we need is a 120 millimeter long piece of polycarbonate, and this allows us to slide this in the back like so. So we can take this, put it through our little design, and as we slide this around, 
this is what gives us that placement. So you might find you need to pull a little bit as you go, be able to feed this around, and you can see that these add a little bit of that extra stability in the back. Nice thing about this design, as we come in and take a look, is I have 3D printed little notches on each of these ends here, so we can keep track in five degree angles of just how far up this angle is going to shoot. So if I pull it down a little bit, we can come down something like a 45. It goes from about a zero degree all the way up to about an 80 degree angle in five degree increments. If you want access to these parts and the CAD files from this, you can consider joining my community down below so you could build this one yourself. And that's it. That is your hooded shooter assembled here, ready to do some prototyping. So let's go take a look at this thing firing in action.